everyone. Um, so, as I said, I'm Caddy, and I'm going to be talking about how you can use GraphQL to make offline capable, capable React Native apps. Um, yeah, so hang on to your hats. So, I've actually never done a Who Am I slide before. I'm going to trial this. So, who am I? Um, I'm Caddy. Um, I've been a software engineer for well, I've been working as a software engineer for about six years now. Um, I started off doing maths, but as I've learned, um, all roads lead to JavaScript. So for the past four years, I've been doing Node and React and all that jazz. And then for the past year and a half, I've mostly been focusing on React Native and been using React Native in production. Well, wrote it first, put it in production, um, and been using it in a couple of, web app a couple of applications. Um, I'm also pretty into open source, uh, both contributing, mostly fixing the things that I want to use, um, and maintaining uh, some open source packages. So if you ever used React Native App Auth for your OAuth needs and had any problems, then that's my fault, and I'm sorry. So today, um, we're going to talk about going offline, which is a scary thing. So I, and probably many of you as well, I uh, came from the web before going into React Native. So, you know, I built web applications, I did React, I did Node, um, and then, you know, someone said, hey, check out this React Native thing. It's like React, but runs on your phone natively, and it's cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I was into that. So I started writing React Native applications. And uh, by default, I would write my React Na Native applications very similarly to how I would write web applications, but actually that's, there's, there's quite a bit of difference. So when it comes to web applications, you kind of, um, you're okay with the concept of being offline. So if I'm not connected to the internet, I'm pretty happy playing a dinosaur game on, on Chrome until I get internet. However, on your phone, if you've got a phone application and you're offline, you're kind of expecting some level of like offline capability. Like if you were like on a plane, and you put your airplane mode on, and um, you know you want to listen to Spotify, but Spotify goes, "Oh, sorry, you're offline. You're pretty pissed off." So you kind of expect like it's different. And even though we're kind of writing web code in React Native, we need to conform to the platform. So um, a little bit about tooling. Um, to to be completely honest, I've given this talk before at a GraphQL conference in Finland. So this is a little bit GraphQL heavy. Um, I've tried to lighten it and uh, bring in some like REST analogies uh, to make it more understandable. But hopefully, if you haven't used GraphQL, this is a little bit of a, hey, how cool is to use GraphQL with React Native? Uh, so I'll be using React Native, obviously, and Apollo 2. So Apollo is, um, was the first and is so far the most popular uh, GraphQL client for, um, well, everything. They do uh, Node and React, which is what we're using. So the way we're going to do this is by example, which is the best way to do, in my opinion. Uh, so I built this application um, in React Native. It's, it's not very useful, but it's like a to-do list with fewer features. Um, so I can create a post, and then it appears in this list. And then I can delete some posts, and they disappear from the list. Very exciting. So let's look at what components um, make up this little application. So obviously we've got this list of posts, uh, and what you see on the left is the GraphQL query uh, that we would use to get fetch the data. So if you've never used GraphQL before, um, here is the RESTful equivalence of that query. So what I'm doing is I'm querying posts, and I'm asking for an ID, created at, and text. So in GraphQL, the client asks for the data that it wants. Um, in REST, obviously, the equivalent would be, you know, you do uh, API slash posts, and then you get a list of posts. All right, next, we've got uh, a mutation. So a mutation is changing data. So if we post our post, uh, then obviously we're adding it to the server. So we've got a mutation called create post. Um, we're adding the text, and then um, the content inside the ID, text, and created that is the data that we want to get back from the server. So if we look at the RESTful equivalent, 
So this is equivalent to doing a post um, to API slash posts. And then in the method body, we're adding the text. Uh, and an example, uh, example result, we get a 201 with the uh, post data. And now the last bit that we have in application, we have um, our delete post mutation. It's very easy. Um, we just pass in the ID, and then we get the ID of the deleted post back. And then again, in REST, we just do a delete to the post ID. Cool. So this is our app. And now, together, we're going to make this work offline. So first, if you look at our list of posts, right? Online, we get our list of posts. Offline, we get a network error. That's sad. Um, how, can, how, can we, uh, how can we fix that? Well, the easiest way to think about it is that if you've ever had any data in your app before, you can always show that data to the user before refreshing new data. Because users are like much happier having slightly outdated data than an error saying, oh, sorry, we're not quite, not quite sure. Um, so what, you, what we want to do is we want to cache the data that we already got before. Um, we want to persist it so that if you close your application and you open it again, this, it's still there. Um, and then we show that data to the user while we're, while we're fetching new, new stuff. Cool. So this is a bit Apollo-specific. Um, but basically, Apollo, the way it's, it sets up, it already has caching built in. So for example, you would never use Apollo and Redux together because Apollo handles all the um, data management for you. But basically, um, like, so like these red bits are bits that I've had to add in order to persist my data. Um, but otherwise, we basically we have, a, I have, a, have the, all the queries that we've made in the cache so that next time, if we do the same query with the same parameters, for example, with a list of posts or like just an individual post, um, what Apollo can do is fetch this query from the data first and then decide whether or not it wants to actually do an network request as well. So then if we use this fetch policy, um, cache and network, then this is exactly what Apollo will do. So by default, all Apollo queries will uh, actually read from the cache. It's actually just cache first. So they will go like, OK, so this this post query in the cache. Yes, it is. OK, show that. Cache and network, what this does um, is like, if the query is in the cache, you show it. But then behind the scenes, you do the request anyway, and then update the cache and user sees it. So as a result, even if something's changed, the user will, like, user will see the posts. Uh, and then like, if there's a new post and it arrives in a couple of seconds, it will, it will show up. If you're offline and network request fails, you just see the old posts, which is a much nicer user experience, even though it's not the latest data. Cool. So that's uh, what I've just showed. This is incredibly simple to do. So if you're using Apollo and GraphQL, you should always do that, because there's no, pretty much no overhead and no reason not to. You're just getting a slightly nicer experience. Uh, this is a bit more complicated, because mutations are well, changing, changing stuff is always hard. Um, so let's look at creating a new post. So I'm um, adding my mutation and creating a post. Let's think about what the user sees when we're creating a post. So um, basically, from the user's perspective, all they see is that the post gets added to the top of the screen on top of your other posts. And uh, how can we do that? So the classic way to do that is obviously I'm, I'm, I'm adding the post, uh, doing a request for creating a new post, uh, and then I'm quickly fetching the post list as well, which will now include my new post, and now I can like, refresh that and show that list to the user. Uh, but what, if we don't have internet, then we obviously can't do that. So you might, um, might guess that we are going for option two, which is an optimistic update. So optimistic update is not a new concept, it's, it's quite well known, but basically uh, what it means is uh, it's used in the web as well. So basically, like in your UI, you do like the user does an interaction, which is async, and it might take a couple of seconds. But what we do is we kind of fake it in the UI. So we display the what we expect to happen first, and then kind of behind the scenes, we do it, and then we cross our fingers. And if it doesn't go our way, then we kind of quickly revert back. And that's basically what we're going to do. So the way you do this in Apollo. Uh, this is again like GraphQL specific, but basically 
we, this is what we think that the mutation will return. So if we're creating a post, we're, we're expecting some kind of a number for an ID. So I'm using the time string because I don't want any um, conflicts. Uh, we've got the text, and then we've got the created add date, which is probably the current date. Um, and well, this, this is very, this is the code example for it. You don't need to understand it. But basically, what we're doing here is we're getting the query from the cache in Apollo, and then we're just like adding our new posts on top of it, so, and then saving it and go like, jobs are good. Um, and for complete list, this is the mutation in J JSX. So you can see, so this is, um, we're actually like adding the create the update function in the mutation, uh, and also the optimistic response. Cool. So, are we done? Right, let's have a look. So, on the right, left, on the left, I've got my little GraphQL server, and on the right, I've got this post. So, first, so now I'm going to close the server to emulate being offline, and I'm going to create a new post. So, if you noticed, this post got added here, and then it disappeared and then we got a network error. So obviously this is not what we wanted, but what, what happened? So we added the post into the cache. Up, um, obviously the UI updated automatically, added the post, and then the network request obviously failed because our, our server was off, we were offline, uh, and Apollo goes like, oh, it didn't work, our optimistic update was wrong, let's revert. So that was the correct thing to do from Apollo. But how can we get around it if we're offline, if we're actually offline? So we need to handle what happens when a network request fails. Um, so the way Apollo is built, Apollo 2 is built, is you have a bunch of little links. There's even like, uh, which are kind of like middlewares. And one of the middlewares is a retry middleware. Uh, and with retry, we can basically retry different network requests. So you should always do this in an opt-in rather than an opt-out out of way. So you should, uh, because you can't do this for every single request, there would be no point retrying like get requests, for example. And you can't, uh, re you shouldn't be retrying all mutations. So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, so if a request has failed, we're going to wait a second, um, and then we're going to we're going to try again. Um, every second, I think. Um, and then this is the retry if condition. And it's saying like, if the message is network request failed, and if our operation was create post, which was the particular mutation that we created, then we go, yes, retry. And if not, for any other request, it doesn't, it doesn't retry. So it wouldn't try to retry the loading of the post or anything, because that would be pointless. And now hooking that together, you notice I've upgraded to dark mode in between those two slides. Um, so we've got an online post, um, which I'm going to delete. Now I'm closing my server, going offline. All right, so this is a post that I've added now while the app is offline. And now I'm restarting my server, which takes a little while. Cool, and you'll see that it actually says create post with text. So there was a little bit of delay, but then when the uh, application was able to get back to the network, it goes like, yeah, let's do it. And then the UI updated as, uh, updated as well with the new created update. Cool, so that's it, success. We're offline, we're online, even though we're really offline. So what are the main takeaways from here? So to make your app work offline, you need to cache and persist your data. So um, to make it work offline with like minimal effort, uh, to make it like almost seamless, um, it's always good to write optimistic updates for mutations. Um, and the reason is not just so you could, um, not, not just you can make, make it work offline, but also a better user experience for the user because they get the feedback first. So even when you're doing a retro request, it might take like two seconds, like, for the user, it's, it's quicker. Uh, and finally, retry applicable mutations. The reason I say applicable is because this won't work for every mutation. It won't work for all destructive mutations, for example. 
Um, so if you do this as you go, you're essentially offline first. So all of this code um, and these slides are on GitHub. So if you found this confusing and you maybe want to dig around in it, feel free. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>